Are you thinking about changing your website? I bet that one of the things that's holding you back is the website platform. There are so many options these days and it can overwhelm you. And frankly, it can stop you in your tracks. So today, as part of my website makeover challenge that I'm doing in my Facebook group, I thought I would do a topic all about website platforms. Now, I'm not going to share with you my exact suggested list of what I think you should get because that's a personal decision. But using my experience, I can definitely share with you six questions that I think you need to ask yourself to help you figure out which platform would be best for you. Let's get started. Hey there, this is Corinna Bench and welcome to the My Digital Farmer podcast. market, it's not enough to just grow your product. You've got to know how to sell it too. Welcome to the My Digital Farmer podcast, where we reveal online marketing strategies and tips to help farmers like you get better and more confident at marketing. Learn how to find more customers, increase your sales, and build a strong brand for your farm. Let's start the show. Well, welcome to episode 40 of the My Digital Farmer podcast. I am your host, Corinna Bench from My Digital Farmer out in Elmore, Ohio. That's just south of Toledo. Thanks for being here today. So excited. If you are here for the first time, I want to say a special hello to you. Please hit the subscribe button and leave me a rating and a review at the end of the show if you enjoyed this episode. So many of you uh, who are following me know that we are in the thick of a website makeover challenge inside of my private Facebook group for CSA Farmers. If you'd like to check that out, you can just do a search on Facebook for CSA Marketing Discussion. You'll find the group. Come on inside. And for the month of January, I have been walking farmers step by step through the process of building a website. So whether you have a website right now that sucks and you want to make it better, or you need to just tweak the messaging, or maybe you want to start from scratch, um, I am trying to help you step-by-step think through the questions that you need to ask before you ever write a single line of code or try to throw some drag and drop menus together and build a homepage of your website, right? So if you want to learn how to make this happen and you want to try and get a working website together in four weeks, please head on over there because that is where the magic is happening. You can subscribe to that challenge by going to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash makeover and then you'll get some emails from me throughout the challenge with some fun resources and extra tools that's going to make it a whole lot easier. But I'd love to see you over there. So One of the questions that I know is going to come up is how do I choose my website platform? So that is why I decided I'm going to make an entire episode on the podcast about that particular question because it comes up a lot. It's actually one of the more frequently asked questions that people share when they first discover my group and they kind of come in for the first time and they want advice like, hey, what website platform should I start with? Should it be Squarespace? Should I do Wix? Like, what do you recommend? And there are all kinds of opinions in the group from our farmers. And this is a question that you will at some point have to ask as you're rebuilding or revamping or creating from scratch um, a website. But it is not the first question that you ask. Uh, which is why this particular topic is coming up in the middle of January, kind of halfway through the challenge, because I don't want people to jump to this on the front end. This is not the first question that we ask before we start building our website. It is an important one, but it is not the first one. Now, there are lots of different platforms that are out there. Some of the big ones that you may have heard of are WordPress, Squarespace, Shopify, Weebly, Wix, raise your hand if you have one of these right now. Um, Those are very common website platforms that we as farmers kind of have to choose from. But there are also done-for-you services. So if you don't want to actually go in and build the site yourself, you can hire another company to essentially host and design and run your public-facing website page and then also host the store and the e-commerce part behind it and even manage your CSA software and your CSA membership. 
where people can come and sign up and then they can come and say, this is what I want in my box every week and customize their shares and tell you if they want a vacation hold. Those are also tools that are out there and there are several of them, Farmigo, Harvey, Barn to Door, Local Line. Um, those are kind of four of the big ones. Graze Cart is another one for meat producers. Um, so I'm just kind of throwing out some names for you. So um, there's lots of choices and here's the problem. When you decide, okay, I wanna redo my website or I wanna build a website for my farm, you often get, at least this happened for me when I was rebuilding my website, I kind of got um, stuck at this step. I was so overwhelmed by all the choices for platforms that I didn't even know how to get unlocked. And for the longest time, I put off redoing my website because of this step of having to choose a platform. So it really has the power to kind of just stop you in your tracks and and make you you know make you stop the entire process and that's a shame i want to push you today as i go through these questions with you my goal is not to tell you this is my favorite platform you should do this one i'm not going to say that so you will not hear me say i think you should all join harvey today that's not my goal for this i want to i want to share kind of six questions or considerations that you need to ask yourself that's going to help you figure out as you compare all these platforms, it's going to help you figure out which one is the one that's going to be best for my business. So that's how I decided to frame this discussion. I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest here too. I have not, nor have I any intention of um, going into every single one of these platforms and doing research for you and figuring out the pros and cons and actually trying to build a website with Wix and then do one with Weebly and then go over here to Farmigo. Like, I'm not going to do that, guys. That's crazy. You're going to have to actually do the work and do the research and narrow down your choices to a few and do some of that legwork. But what I can do is, from my own experience, when we had to rebuild our website two, three years ago, I made some mistakes because I didn't know to ask some of these questions. And so it took a lot longer to figure out which platform I wanted. So I'm going to kind of help shortcut that process by giving you these things now to think about. And that's going to really help you figure out, oh, that's what I need to think about now so that you don't end up with a platform that doesn't allow you to do something later on that you wish it could. And then you're stuck and you're trapped. Does that make sense? So one of the uh, things I'm going to give you in today's episode, I'm going to link up a fantastic blog post that I think does a great job of comparing all of the different website platforms out there. Um, it doesn't include things like Farmigo or Local Line or Harvey or Barn to Door. It doesn't do those. But if you want to do a do-it-yourself kind of website, there is a great blog post that's already done this work of comparing them, the pros and cons and the pricing. So I'm not going to reinvent the wheel and go through all of that again and make my own blog post. That's silly. So I'm going to link that up. You'll find it in the show notes, which you can get at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash 40, the number 40. All right, so let's dive in to these six questions that you need to ask yourself. The first one is, how involved in the updating and creation of the website messaging do you want to be? This is a very core question that you need to answer and be honest about on the front end of this process. When we decided to hire a website company to build our website a couple of years ago. This was actually one of the questions that they asked me in our very first interview. They wanted to know, are you planning on actively being involved in the updating of the site? Are you going to want to go in every week yourself and be able to manipulate stuff, add new images, go in and change the text, add an, an extra page, change the copy or edit stuff on a certain site? Like, is, is that something that you're going to need to want to do yourself? Or are you going to want to farm that out and just be able to pick up the phone, call up your website guy and say, hey, I need you to update the info on page so-and-so to say this. Or, hey, I want you to switch out the picture on page so-and-so for this. That is a question that you need to wrap your head around because depending on how you answer that question, it will determine what kind of platform options are open to you. Now, when they asked me this question, at first I was like, well, I want to be way hands off. I just want to 
you know, be able to, I love the idea of just being able to call you and say, hey, I've got a new picture, throw this on the header of my website. But as I thought more about it, and this was also the time when I was starting to study digital marketing, right along the time when I hired this website company, and I began to learn all this stuff about how marketing should be done, um, I started to realize, you know what, I don't know if, I, if I'm going to be hands off. I, I think I'm going to want to be in the weeds, and I'm going to want to be able to change things and be spontaneous and go in there and add an extra page or uh, throw up a, a form a pop-up form on my own. And I don't want to have to wait two days or three days for that to happen because, you know, my website guy might be busy and he can't get to it right away. Or um, I'm not sure I want to have to continue to pay my website guy, you know, $100 an hour every time he's going to update something on my website. And so I really paused. At first, I thought that I wanted someone to design my website for me and do it all and do the upkeep. And the more I thought about it, I'm like, no, man, I'm a micromanager. Like, I need to be able to go in there when I want and change stuff. And I also knew that I was growing as a marketer. And I anticipated that as I continued to grow, I would want to have more access to be able to change things. So when we sat down with them, I said, you know what? I I think I'm going to want to be able to do it myself. Now, what that did, my website designer said, okay, well, there were kind of two choices for platforms or how we were going to set up your site. Um, We were going to go initially with kind of a more beautiful layout where we had a lot more powerful features and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But since you want to be able to touch it and change it, we're going to make it a WordPress site because that way you'll be able to do that. Okay. So they built this site for me as a WordPress site, but, um, I would have the capability of being able to go in there myself and change things. And that was really huge. Now, if you listened to um, one of my other episodes where I talk about the common mistakes that people make when they build websites, you've heard the story about how I ended up parting ways with this website company. And one of the uh, kind of reasons that this happened, I think, is because as they were building my site and as I was learning all this marketing stuff and seeing what I could do, uh, we weren't really aligning anymore in terms of how they were trying to solve my problem. Like they weren't doing the things that I thought they needed to do. And so I was, I was micromanaging. I was trying to get in the weeds and really control what I wanted the messaging on the site to say. And so this initial conversation where I was like, well, I want you to do it all for me, but I still want to be able to update it later on. Like I changed the rules on them and suddenly realized, no, I actually don't think you're doing it right. I want to change the messaging right now as you're building it. I want you to fix it. And that caused some tension. So just make this decision early on. Are you going to want to be an active participant in the messaging and the building of the site as it's going up? Are you going to want to do it yourself? Or are you going to want to farm this out to someone else and really just be super hands off and just be able to call them and say, hey, um, throw up a new image. I've got this product launch going up in a couple weeks. I need you to change what it says on the header of my website. Okay, decide that now. It is a very important decision. And you're going to fall into one of two camps. You're going to either be somebody who's like, yeah, I want to do this myself. I'm resourceful. I can figure this out. I'm going to make this a priority. Or you're going to be like, Hey man, that is not my skill set. I have zero interest in making that my skill set and I'm going to rely on someone else who's really good at this. I'm going to have um, initial meetings with them, make sure that we're all on the same page, but I'm going to trust them to take care of it and and my time is is worth it to me to be you know, I'm going to spend that money for that service because my time is that valuable. Okay? So you're going to kind of fall into two different camps and one is not better than the other, but you need to decide which one it is, okay? I spent a lot of time on that one, but that is a really important step, and I screwed it up. Um, and because I screwed it up and I ended up micromanaging the process with my website designer, I ended up being unhappy. We scrapped the project. I lost my investment of $3,000, and I just wish that I had known way sooner that I wanted to be in charge of the messaging, and I wanted to help build it alongside them. If we had had that conversation way earlier, it would have gone so much better. Okay, the second thing you need to think about here as you're choosing your website platform is the store, the e-commerce platform. Are you going to use this website as an e-commerce platform as well? Or is it just going to be an informational site where people can come and learn more about you? And then when they click on the buy now button, it's going to take them to um, 
Farmigo or to uh, Shopify. So you need to ask yourself, do what is the actual platform, the store platform that comes along with this site? Is that important to me? And what are some of those elements that that store needs to do? So as I was shopping around for themes and platforms, I was taking a look at their e-commerce store that came along with the bundle. So for uh, WordPress, so I have a WordPress website and WooCommerce comes with WordPress. That's the type of store platform. And so I wanted to go look at, let me see what an actual WooCommerce store looks like. I would go and hunt around on their demo pages and say, well, do I like how that looks? So I paid attention to the formatting. Do I like how the checkout page looks? Is it clear? Um, do I have the ability to add some features in here um, as I'm creating the different product pages? Is it easy to set up? Does it seem pretty simple for how you go about doing it? And does the store give me the ability to create cross-sells or upsells? Now, in my case um, with WooCommerce, um, it does. So it can have recommended products um, underneath the product page that kind of have alignment with the one that they're currently looking at. Or Shopify does this really well. If you go to a Shopify store and you're looking at something, they will give you suggestions underneath for other things that might pair well with that pair of pants that you want to buy, right, to make a complete outfit. So think about that. Like, does this store offer that feature? Do you like how it looks? Does it give you the ability to add an upsell? So WooCommerce just the basic plan doesn't have this automatic pop-up that comes up after someone has purchased that says, thanks for buying now. Would you like to add this into your cart with an extra one-click purchase? Um, it doesn't come with that, but it does have a plugin. WordPress has a plugin capability, so I could purchase a plugin that would give me that possibility. So I was looking at all of those options, thinking about, okay, I, if I want to be able to do that down the road, does my platform give me that? Is it customizable? Um, are you going to use online sales a lot? So there are some people who don't even use an online store. Uh, they just have people click the button to buy now and it takes them to a Google form and that's how they sign up for their CSA. So the store may not even be important to you, right? So ask this question, how important is the e-commerce platform? What does that e-commerce platform need to do for me? And what are, let's talk about these other two pieces of the store that are huge. Um, how do how does it collect payment? Um, so some of the platforms are uh, maybe only Stripe and PayPal, and that's it, and Apple Pay, but they don't offer other options. Um, some, uh, in my case, I didn't actually want credit card fees at all for the CSA portion um, because I it's a huge a huge amount when somebody's spending twelve hundred dollars a pop, you know, to buy a whole bunch of things in the cart. I just wanted to take the fees out of the equation. So I was looking for a store that would allow me to have invoice only. Now, I know some of you out there are groaning right now and shaking your heads and you're saying, really, Corinna, I can't believe you're still teaching that. That's my decision. Um, I know that there are a lot of people out there that say, if you, if you offer that credit card option, it really increases sales. They're probably right. But we're at a place in our business, we're 12 years into our business. And we have such a strong, loyal customer base. I think we have... 81% uh, of our customers' re uh, retention rate came back this season. I didn't have to work very hard to get that. And so when I tell them, hey, this is how you're paying. You're paying with a check. No one is getting upset. They're just like, that's how it's always been. So I wanted to have the ability to have a store that was invoice only where I could go in and check mark a box and say, I don't even want to offer the option of credit card or bank ACH. There's no sales happening online at all. I just want people to be able to sign up. They get an invoice and then they have to mail their check. Now, this was a deal breaker for me. And ultimately, the only platform that I could find that did that was WooCommerce. And that's what sealed the deal for me, frankly. Um, I wanted to avoid those fees. That's thousands of dollars that are still in my pocket. And I have a clientele that is willing to do that. They don't get fussy about, oh, she doesn't take credit cards. Would they like it if I do? Probably. But they don't make a big stink about it that I'm asking for checks. So I wanted that feature, invoice only. And there aren't that many uh, store options that offer that. Um, and then, of course, pay attention to the fees. So some of these platforms will ask for like a 3%, 4%, 5% fee 
um, on top of the payment gateway fee that you might have to pay for. So um, really think that through. I know some of the uh, done for you services like Farmigo and Harvey, like they take a high percentage, in my opinion, a high percentage of the um, of the sales as kind of their, their fee for their services. And they are providing a lot of help and a lot of services. They're saving you time. Some, some cases they're promising you marketing help. Um, they are handling the transaction, um, that security piece. They're providing you with a software that's giving you the ability to customize shares and do delivery routes. I mean, that's all fancy stuff. That's what you're paying for. And so you have to decide, is that worth it for me, right? Uh, that percentage that they're taking off the top. If you are a CSA that needs a lot of bells and whistles, then that's going to be attractive to you. For a CSA like mine, where we're very traditional, we don't offer the option for customizable, we don't let people um, swap weeks or take a week off and get credit later, we just don't. We keep it really simple. I don't need to have an e-commerce platform like a Farmigo or a Harvey or a Barn to Door that's going to cost extra money. So that made it really simple for me to take that off the table. So ask that question, what does my e-commerce platform need to do for me? Do I need it to have all those other bells and whistles? Because if so, that's going to help you make a decision about what kind of platform to go with, whether you're going to do a done for you service um, that's also a CSA management software, or whether you're going to have a do-it-yourself website like a WordPress site or a Squarespace site. Okay, the next category that I want you to think about when you're choosing your website platform is integrations. You're probably like, what does that even mean, Corinna? <laughs> does your website platform have the ability to integrate with other applications, with other apps that are out there? So let me give you some examples of how this might apply to you. When a customer comes to your store and purchases something, purchases a CSA, does your store currently have the ability to reach out to your email service provider and say, hey, this person with email address XYZ just purchased this product, tag them as purchased CSA Share 2020. So that is an example of an integration where a website is able to create a connection to another app like an email service provider and communicate back and forth. So why is this important? Well, I want to be able to know what my customers are doing. I'm able to segment my customers in my email service provider based on their actions on my website store. So if they purchase my CSA, I want to know that they purchased that because that makes it so much easier for me to broadcast an email to the right people. Now, before I had integrations, before I had a website that could do this for me, I would have to go and download the CSV file somehow and figure out who are all the people that purchased, take that email list, and I'd have to do this every time someone bought, right, to keep it updated. And then I'd have to go and add it into my email service provider manually and make sure they got tagged a certain way. And that sometimes I would miss people. People would fall through the cracks. I would forget to do it because it wasn't automated and I wouldn't have everyone on the list. So what I love about an integration is like with WordPress, WordPress integrates with like everything under the sun. And so I can set up a plugin. I can upload a plugin and I can just say, hey, talk to ConvertKit anytime something happens. I want that to be communicated to my email service provider. And I can be very specific about the kinds of things that I want information that I want to have shared. So think about your platform. If you have squ the Square Store right now, for instance, are you able to have Square Store talk to MailChimp or Square Stores talk to ConvertKit so that anytime someone buys something for the first time, you can tag them as a farmer's market customer or an online store customer, right? So an integration with email service provider is um, something to definitely think about. Now, I'm going to be honest. This was another key reason why I ultimately left Small Farm Central. We used to uh, work with them as our CSA management software. They were great. I had really, really good experience with them. They are now um, known as Harvey. I don't think that the Small Farm Central is supported anymore. Um, but one of the reasons we decided to leave was because I was learning about all this digital marketing. I was learning about email marketing specifically, and I wanted to be able to create a um, 
on mo email onboarding sequence so that when someone bought, there would be an immediate sequence that would fire and they would start getting a drip campaign that would sort of educate them and welcome them into the tribe and do a lot of nurturing. And I wanted to be able to tag them and segment them a certain way. And Small Farm Central did not have that ability to be able to create automatic drip campaigns. And I'm like, man, this is really, this is, you know, not so cool. I'm having every time somebody signs up through Small Farm Central, I have to go in, cut and paste their email address and go and add them to ConvertKit. And that, you know, that got old after a while. So um, I was looking for a website solution that would be able to just seamlessly do that for me. I could set up the rule um, inside of uh, Zapier.com and, and Zapier.com would be able to connect um, ConvertKit with my website. All right. So um, that is one of the first kind of integrations that you need to think about. Um, payment gateways is another one. So does your e-commerce platform integrate with the payment gateway that you prefer? So do you have Stripe, PayPal? Do you have another, another uh, payment gateway? You've got to make sure that whatever platform you end up using actually works with that particular um, payment gateway. So just check that information because that would really stink that you go to all this trouble, you make the financial investment, you start building out this site, and then you get to the part where you build your store and you realize it won't even work with your payment gateway. And now you have to go and set up a totally different one that might have different fees. Okay. That was the third consideration, integrations. Now, the fourth question that I think you need to ask as you're choosing a website platform is this. How much do you want to spend? Price. We're going to talk about price here. So um, there's, again, kind of two different options here. There's the do-it-yourself option where you are finding a platform that you're going to be really hands-on in. You're going to be the one building out the messaging, creating the widgets and the uh, uploading the photos and making it look exactly the way you want to based on the theme that you have. And then there is the, the done for you services option where Local Line or Barn to Door, or Harvey or Framigo, they're going to essentially give you a, a website that you could use as part of their services. And they'll even set it up for you and do a lot of that. Now, when you compare those two options, the price difference will be significant. You're going to pay a lot more for those done for you services, as you should. All right, they're doing a valuable service for you, a lot of extra bells and whistles, and so you're going to pay a percentage fee of your revenue and your sales for that service. Now, if you are a beginning farm, I don't think you need to start with those um, done-for-you services. I recommend that you don't. This is probably the one time I'm going to give you my recommendation because I just don't think that's a wise investment of your money early on. I think you can get by with kind of doing it yourself with a small amount. And even just frankly setting up a Shopify store on the front end if you have to. Um, just getting started, use that money in, uh, in another way and invest it in a different way in your business. So how much does it actually cost? I'm going to kind of give you an idea of what a person like me would spend on an annual basis for their website. So I am running a WordPress website where I built it all myself. Here's what I had to spend, Okay. I have to pay every year about $15 for my domain name. So what that means is I have to go and purchase the rights to own the URL property sharedlegacyfarms.com. That way no one else can grab that. And every year, um, if I don't pay in time, that property, that URL address goes up for sale. Someone else could grab it. And now I no longer can use that website name, right? So I pay for that. That's called a domain name. And that's about $15 a year. Not that expensive. And then I have to pay for what's called hosting services. Uh, because WordPress is an open source software, um, I have to actually find a company who will host the website on the internet for me. And that cost, I use a company called HostGator. I recommend them. They're super awesome. Bluehost is another common one that's out there. And I will put the link for um, both of those in the show notes if you want to go check them out. Um, HostGator costs me about, I want to say, uh, like $10 a month 
to host it. They might even be cheaper. And this will depend on whether or not you have, you need to, you need to have like a security cer certificate, an SSL certificate. If you want to have a store on there that's actually accepting credit cards, then it will be a little bit more for that every year. But because I don't have that, um, I want to say it's only 10 bucks a month. So that's like $120 a year for hosting. And that is every year, like I have to pay that fee. Okay, so right there, I'm spending about $140 just to be able to have my website in existence. Now, there are a few other expenses that come along with that because I choose to do so. Um, because I purchased a theme, there, there are free themes out there that I could use to put on my WordPress site, but I decided to upgrade to a paid plan because I wanted to have access to some of these cool design widgets as I did my drag and drop builder thing when I built the website. And, and so I had to pay, I think I paid $120, a one-time fee for, for that professional plan, okay? So I only had to pay that once. So now I'm about $300 into this investment. And then there are, in WordPress at least, there are what are called plugins. And these are like, almost like, think of them as apps, like little things that you can add to your theme that give you extra functionality. So an example of one, would be um, a plugin that allows me to, it's called uh, Pretty Links, and it allows me to create a pretty URL address um, for to redirect someone. So if someone is, uh, if I want to send someone to my Square store to buy something in the online store, that address is like really complicated and long. And so I can go and create a, Another address that's easy to remember, like sharedlegacyfarms.com forward slash uh, Elmore store. And when someone types that in, it'll re redirect them to that ugly link. Okay. That's an example of a plugin called Pretty Links that you just add in for free to the software. And it allows you to do all kinds of other cool things. So there are tons of plugins that come along. And those, some of them are paid, some of them are free. I probably spend another. $200 max a year for those plugins. Okay, so my cost for running my website is about $500 a year, roughly. That's being generous. Okay, um, so that's totally worth it for me when I think about the cost savings there. Um, I'm really comfortable with that decision. So you need to kind of do some research and ask yourself, how much do can I spend on this website um, asset? is do I have the resources to go out and do done for you services and have someone take care of it? Or am I willing to try and figure this out on my own and you know save some money? Now you can also set up your website yourself um, or with the help with someone else kind of together and then reach out to them anytime you need some support and be like, hey, could you do X, Y, Z? I need you to uh, back up my files or I need you to I can't figure out how to do X, Y, Z. Can you just do this section of the page? And you could reach out to a professional and pay them, you know, a hundred bucks to do that one job for you. Um, so that's another, th just know that that's also an option for you on the table. And I do exercise that sometimes. I have a tech guy in my back pocket. So when I run into trouble, I can say, hey, I do most of this myself, but when I can't, um, I'm going to ask you to help me. And then I just pay a small fee. So I love this set up for us because I'm kind of a do-it-yourself kind of girl. I like to figure out problems and do them myself. And I, I have a team around me that can help me do there. And I f get there and I feel like I'm saving money in the process. Okay, so definitely consider price. Um, those CSA management software systems are expensive. They, they can end up being thousands of dollars a year, uh, depending on how large your CSA is. And so just ask yourself, is that something that's worth it to me? Because it may very well be if it's going to save you a ton of time. All right, two more. You're, you're still with me, aren't you? I know I'm going on and on. Two more things I want you to think about as you're picking out your platform. What features do you want to have on your website? This is where you've got to do a little bit of planning in advance. Um, I'm encouraging my farmers who are part of my website makeover challenge to do uh, some research and look around at other websites that they like and get some ideas of what's even possible with a website. What are some of the elements and sections that you can have on a website these days? So do you wanna have a blog? Do you wanna have a photo gallery? Do you wanna have a slider 
header? Do you want to have an online store? Do you want a contact form, a special kind? Do you want pop-up boxes? Do you want to be able to um, have social share icons? Do you want a community forum? Do you want to be able to create a membership site option? Um, so, so many different elements here that you could have. So do the work and figure out what are those pieces that I need to have, those features that need to be on my site? What is the goal of this website? And how are those features going to help me get there? Because that's going to help you determine um, also what platforms you can go with. So if you really uh, want to have a, um, a blog, you're going to pay attention to the themes in some of these different platforms and kind of look and be like, ah, I really don't like how that blog how they limit how the blog can look with this particular platform. So I'm not going to go with that platform. I like this one over here better. So this is where you just have to decide what's most important to you. Look at those features then in each of the platforms, see if they're offered. And if they are offered, uh, how do they look? What's the format? Do you, which one li do you like better? Okay. So um, that's another big question that I wish that I had asked earlier um, because I think it would have um, helped me make my decision a lot sooner. And then finally, this is a, another question that I really want you to think about, because I know that some of you are kind of still rookies in this whole marketing journey with me. And I want you to ask this question, will this website be able to grow with you and your business? Or will it at some point hold you back? Now, what do I mean by this? So when I first started my journey into wanting to find a new website and build one myself, one of the, the impetus for that was that I felt like I was growing as a marketer. I wanted to be able to add features like lead pages. I wanted to be able to put lead magnets on my website. And I couldn't do that with Small Farm Central. I wanted to be able to hook up a, a, a drip campaign, an email onboarding sequence. Um, and I couldn't do that with Small Farm Central, right? And so I felt limited by um, how I wanted to grow as a marketer and what I, how I wanted to move people through the customer journey. So I'm like, I need to have a tool that's going to work with me and that's going to grow with me because I could tell that I was going to learn a ton and that I was going to be implementing a ton of this stuff uh, in digital marketing. And it was going to grow my business and just help me spread my reach and my impact. So I wanted to have the right tools in my toolbox from the get-go. And I didn't want to have to you know, create this one solution in, in one platform. And then two years later, it'd be like, oh man, I'm kind of outgrowing this right now. And I got to start from scratch and, and move everything over to a different platform. I really wanted to do it right the, from the get go and get the right tool that would be able to be with me when I, you know, get out of my teenager years and I become an adult in my business, right? When I'm a more mature business. And I feel like ultimately I landed on WordPress, even though it was going to be harder for me, there was going to be a learning curve to figure it out. I knew that that was ultimately the platform that I was going to end up on in the future. So I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to start there now. I'm going to figure this out so that I don't have to do this complicated transfer later on. That's just something to think about. Now you could argue this from the other side. You could say, you know what, if it's, if it's overwhelming you, this idea of doing this yourself and having a more robust system from the beginning and getting all those tools in place now, if that's what's actually turning into a roadblock and an obstacle for you and keeping you from moving forward, then maybe you should just start with something that's simpler, that's easy to handle, that would be quicker to get it up um, and start there. But just be aware that you may run into um, a problem later on a couple years from now when you're like, man, my store platform doesn't um, allow me to have an upsell page. And I really wish I could have an upsell because I'm learning about that from my digital farmer. Or man, I really wish that I could have my store talk to my email service provider, but it doesn't. And I got to do this backwards way of getting people on my email list. And man, I wish that I could do that. And but I don't want to have to switch everything over. Like ask these questions now and see if they matter to you. Because um, I have found that as you get better at marketing, you're going to, you're going to want to do more things. And sometimes your website choice can actually limit you. Well, I'm going to share that blog post link with you in the show notes at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash 40, the number 40. And I want you to go and take a look at that because it lists about 12 different platforms that are out there. And it really does a great job of the pros and the cons. And it's going to help you kind of 
go through these six questions too and say, you know, does it have integrations and um, does it, um, will it hold me back? Is it something that's kind of a beginner platform? Is it going to have some limitations once I get to be a bigger business or a more advanced business with marketing? Is it going to hold me back? It's going to kind of really help you see some of that stuff so that you can make those decisions. Now, I'm before I let you go, um, I'm going to just share with you what I think the my top recommendations would be for website platforms that are not like Farmigo and Harvey and, and Barnchador. I'm not going to pick my favorite from those groups. Um, but if you're going to try and do it yourself, here are the ones that I want you to kind of look at first, because that list of 12 is really overwhelming still to me. So if you had to kind of, if I had to break that down to maybe six, these are the ones that I would think about. So first of all, I would recommend WordPress. That's the one that I use, but that's definitely a little bit more advanced, but it's, it's the one that's going to have the greatest number of options for you down the road. Another one to look at is Squarespace. This is probably, uh, it's probably one of the more popular ones that farmers are currently using. Um, another one to check out is Wix, W-I-X. And um, surprisingly, uh, Constant, Contact, Constant Contact Website Builder is another really strong platform to check out. And it's not talked about a lot, um, but among people in the know, it it's considered one of the better ones. And um, the the only issue that I would have with constant contact is that you really are limited by, um, you can only use constant contact tools. So it wouldn't integrate with ConvertKit, for instance, right? But they do have, if you're going to, if you're with constant contact and you love that email service provider, it really is a great done for you service. It has all the elements and all the integrations together. Um, and then a couple of others to think about, if, especially if you're just really like e-commerce focused, would be um, Shopify or Big Commerce. Those are the other kind of two, but those are really more for just building up a store presence as opposed to an entire website um, with, a, you know, with a fancy homepage and stuff. So um, those are kind of the top six that I would list out for you to check out first. And um, what I want you to do with this information today, especially if you're doing the website makeover challenge with me, I want you to take these questions that I shared with you and I want you to choose, go to that blog post, take a look at that and read it. And then I want you to choose maybe three or four of those platforms that you're going to research. Um, I'll also include in the show notes all of the links to the um, CSA management softwares, the Farmigos, the Harveys, the Barn to Doors, the um, local lines of the world, okay? So you can find those. Um, but I want you to ask yourself, okay, I'm going to research these three platforms and I'm going to kind of figure out which ones are probably the best for where I want to go. I cannot do that work for you because I don't know your customer like you do and I don't know what the goals are of your business. I don't know what you're most known for in your business either and depending on how you answer those questions, you're going to want to you're going to want to have a different kind of website platform than the one that I've chosen. So uh, hopefully these questions have been helpful for you to kind of figure out a starting point, but you still will have to go and do the work of checking out those different platforms, um, test some of them, do some trial runs, and um, go on inside on the back end and play around with them. All of these platforms will let you do that for free. They have trial programs for like seven days and just see if it's user-friendly. See if you like how it looks. See if it has those elements and if you can see yourself getting to the finish line fast um, with some of those tools. All right, well, I hope this has been helpful. Again, the show notes are going to have a ton of links today. So if you're serious about trying to figure out this website platform conundrum, please head over to mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash 40, 40, and you will find um, that link to that awesome blog post that compares all the different platforms, the pros and cons, and also links to the different CSA management softwares so that you can look at those and compare those as well. All right. Well, I look forward to seeing you next week in another episode of the My Digital Farmer podcast. If you enjoyed this one, please hit the subscribe button, write me a rating or a review, and I would love to see you inside my website makeover challenge. If you want to get on the bandwagon and try to build a better website in four weeks, head over and subscribe at mydigitalfarmer.com forward slash makeover. Join the free conversation in my Facebook group. I'm doing video trainings in there 
during the whole month of January, and I'm walking you step by step through the process for how to get to the finish line so that you have a working homepage that you're proud of in four to five weeks. All right, I will talk to you guys next week. Have a good one. We'll talk soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.